XRP fell by 4.9% yesterday. Some interesting volatility and in line with the rejection of the 50 EMA on the hourly chart. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my thoughts and opinions on what this means for the price action and what I think is likely to happen next. We have seen some very interesting developments and some pockets of buying pressure as well. So this does change things ever so slightly. So as I get into today's video, smash that like button if you're new, subscribe, and let's jump into the charts. So here we have XRP paired up with the USDT and we're on the one hour Binance chart. So we were looking yesterday at this rejection point of the 50 EMA, 50 SMA. It held up incredibly well. Our actual expectations, and this is the thing with uh, with XRP that's been happening a lot recently, is the typical expectations. It just seems to want to wick just that little bit more above it. Um, so here we were expecting 57.75 to 58.17. And of course, we wicked up slightly higher to 58.45. Okay, so again, we want to give our trades here on XRP just that little bit more breathing room, I think. Um, but here we can see our idea of going short in and around this range, putting the stop loss above the 50 SMA here or the trend line, depending on how you feel. And we were going to target out 1.5 risk reward ratio, which would have been easily hit because 1.5, it should be actually something that you can hit consistently uh, quite a bit. And here you can see that we would have hit take profit on this uh, yesterday at 1500 hours. We're doing a great trade opportunity. Of course, profit can come down a little bit deeper. Um, obviously, we were targeting down to come down actually a fair chunk more. And it still looks like we are going to see more volatility. So great trade opportunities here trading. Um, if you are trading, you know, Bitcoin or XRP Cardano, um, then you know, you should be able to make some pretty sizable gains at the minute with the amount of volatility that we're seeing in the market. Obviously, trading is incredibly risky. So I'm just sharing the thoughts and opinions as to how, how I approach things. Um, if you are uh, using our BitGet, um, I say our exchange, it's not our exchange, but if you're using our BitGet affiliate account or Blowfin affiliate accounts, um, you can join our Discord server and get access to the trades that we're doing with the, the Take Profit and all that kind of stuff associated with it. So you can see exactly the kind of trades that I was doing. I made some pretty good profit on Cardano yesterday, as an example. Uh, all the links for those accounts are in the description down below. So if you're not currently trading or thinking about trading, uh, probably best to do some more education rather than try and just go straight into trading. Um, if you sign up to BitGet or Blowfin, they have dummy accounts and they allow you to kind of do paper trading to kind of get your head around how it all works and all that kind of stuff. Um, well worth um, doing that if you're considering trading uh, before just jumping straight in with real money. Uh, of course, join us on our Discord server linked in the description. And we can talk more about uh, the ins and the outs of that. We've got a fantastic community, fantastic support team down there as well. They can help you understand you know, some of the terminology and that kind of stuff if you're thinking about it. Um, so here we can see XRP rejecting off the area. Some great profit potentially made here. And uh, it still looks quite bearish to me at the moment. But there are some interesting things here. So let's jump into the 15 minute chart. And the reason that I want to do this is that the moves to the downside, we were kind of expecting a bit more of an impulsive move after kind of coming into this range, but we didn't see it. We saw this continuation to the upside, a bit of a dump to the downside, then a surge again. We're seeing lots of liquidity being extracted from the market. This still shows me with the idea that we can still move down before moving up, then to move down again. Rejection on the 15 minute 200 EMA, guys. Honestly, you cannot stress the importance of a 200 EMA right in here. Huge trading opportunity on a 15 minute time frame. Um, so again, depending on where you want it to come get your entries you can kind of really pay attention to how this would have played out you can see this price moving up to the 200 EMA uh, we could see here that this would have been a great place for thinking about rejection we probably would have gone short here with a stop loss above that 200 EMA on a 15 minute time frame again 1.5 risk world ratio guys with that tight stop loss there would have been a fantastic easy easy profit in my opinion um, but again we can see here and this structured move to the upside this structured move to the downside this one to the upside the next move looks like a breakdown of the 50 SMA uh, so yeah, 50 SMA and 50 EMA right in here. We have a couple of interesting candles forming at the moment on the 15 minute time frame. So I am looking at this as a complete move to the upside already right in here. It does look like a little bit lower than expected. Yeah, a little bit lower than expected, but in line with those expectations, maybe we'll get a wick up to that 57.42 to 57.57. Um, but you know, it'll be interesting. Current resistance to the point of recording this video is sat right in here. Lots of sell pressure right here coming in line with that 200 EMA once again at 57.48 to 57.7. So again, we're looking at rejection within that point. Let's go back to our hourly and we can see that this area right here, I'm going to go ahead and tidy out some of these areas. 
you can see this resistance. Actually, I'm going to keep this one in and I'm going to get rid of some of that and I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to leave these two in because these are historical points that I think are really important. Um, and here you can see on the hourly chart, we're coming up right up into this area of resistance. Uh, this is going to fall in line with that, um, that 50 EMA and 50 SMA in the next few hours or so. So why is this important? Well, this is important because I'm looking at the market here through the idea that we are still looking to progress up just a little bit before dumping down. And that move to the downside could be quite a profitable trade. So we're going to be looking, as I often try to do here, we're going to be looking for shorting the market uh, using a break down or break out situation. So we're going to be looking at the 50 EMA, 50 SMA on the hourly chart for that trade. We're going to be looking at kind of going trying to go short because I do think a breakdown is the highly probable. Stop loss, I'm going to put higher than the previous area of resistance and above that 50 SMA. And I'm going to target out 1.5 risk world ratio, which is going to be so easy to do because it's going to be right here with this previous area of resistance that could turn to support. Okay, so I'm going to just put that approximately there. So that's going to look like a entry around 57.71 uh, approximately, but it does depend on that 50 EMA, which we'll know about in a few hours time. Uh, we'll have take profit approximately 57.27 and take profit and sorry, stop loss set at 58 cents. That there should be some pretty decent returns with some good leverage like 510x, something to that effect um, using 1% of your account because proper risk management is insanely important, guys. Um, so uh, yeah, that looks like what we're going to be looking for. I think we're going to see a bit of a push to the upside, but it's not going to be much. We'll hit the upper area of resistance right in here, 57.48 to 57.79 rejection. And that rejection to the downside, I think, is going to be pretty reasonable. Uh, we would look for 56.18 to 56.47. Uh, it's going to be right in this little pocket right here. And yeah, I'm going to be looking at that as a three wave collapse, one, two and three, like so. And uh, that's actually going to be a part of a bigger bullish move, though, to the upside, in my opinion, which will be a three wave move like this. And we'll just see another test of some of those EMAs, maybe even the 200 hourly EMA on that next test before we start thinking about that next collapse to the downside. Now, what is really frustrating about all this move here is it's still looks like we are going to see this kind of volatility over a fair chunk of time. So again, some huge trading opportunities. I kind of want to stress that enough. Like on the hourly chart, it's just trading opportunity after trading opportunity after trading opportunity. On the larger timeframes, we can talk about the dollar cost averaging. We can talk about how we can build out uh, bigger hodl positions. But on the hourly chart, this kind of pattern right here, it just shows us the amount of liquidity that's being extracted from the market, right? The expectation of a small push to the upside into that pocket of resistance. And then, of course, dumping to the market, going down into this next pocket of resistance, this huge buying pocket right down here, this huge order blocks in this lower range, only to then push right the way back up towards that 200 EMA and then dump all the way back down again, potentially even coming down lower than 50, uh, 55.28 uh, coming in down here. So like, it's looking like the market is just about extracting liquidity uh, when it comes to XRP. But ultimately, the market in itself isn't terribly too bad. We are still, of course, if I actually roll this up into a daily chart, chart and we talk about the bigger macro pieces because they are important. Let's go ahead and just delete some of that stuff off because we don't need all of that noise on the chart. Um, as we talk about the daily chart, we know that we are still looking for that breakout situation towards 75 and 85 cents. If you don't want to be trading the smaller time frames and you want to be trading the larger time frames, right here guys like this is a pretty interesting structure as well we are still looking for the lows before we get into the rallies so we are looking for 50 to 53 cents okay or 51 to 52 depending on how you want to kind of look at that there's, there's a couple of different ways but ultimately it's going to be somewhere between 50 50 and 53 cents okay that's where i'm looking for this break to down to kind of finish this is a part of a three wave pattern right in here one two three okay but that's actually a part of a b wave structure on a larger time frame which looks like an a b and c and that's how we kind of get that next kind of structure so even though the, the, the hourly chart shows extreme volatility and great liquidity being extracted from the market if you're open to the idea of actually holding a, an open short position or an open long position for a significant period of time the daily chart offers some very very lucrative opportunities personally i look at the daily chart more from like a, a hodling kind of dollar cost averaging building long-term positions that are more spot than leverage, but you can leverage trade on these daily charts, not a problem either. Of course, there are other considerations such as funding rates and all that to kind of consider, but for the most part, 
you know, it still shows fantastic opportunities. So here we are still looking for the breakout. We are still looking for 75 to 85 cents. But before we get there, I'm still looking for this move to the downside. The positive news is that we've already lowered our stochastic RSI from overbought to oversold. And that's a huge positive because that means that we are going to see some real good support and some good runs to the upside. Now, it's possible, of course, that we don't go down into that 50 to 53 cents. OK, so at the moment, we haven't got a confirmed breakdown at all here on the daily time. If I actually go and load this up properly uh, on the here on the daily time frame, uh, let me get rid of that. Uh, here we can see that we haven't got a closed position lower than the 50 EMA yet. We've wicked down, but we haven't closed down. Okay, and we need at least two daily closes below that level, and ideally even lower than the 200 daily EMA to give me confidence about that 50 to 53 cents. Our minimum expectations as a wick down towards the 54.52, that there would be a double bottom situation where we can then start thinking about that next run to the upside. So the expectations are quite interesting. The structure that we've seen so far is also quite interesting. The stochastic RSI, the way that it's reacting, just shows that there isn't a lot of appetite for buying at the minute. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's also an appetite, for, sorry, there's not a huge appetite for selling at the minute, but it also doesn't show a huge appetite for buying either. So we want to be aware that the volume profiles here are so, so very low at the minute that they aren't giving us the idea that we are going to see a significant bounce. So we want to be a little bit mindful of that. We can see the stochastic RSI completely resetting, for example, and then just basically dumping the price even harder later. We've got some bearish divergence, which we saw previously. We've come down. We're still lower than a 50 level on the relative strength index. Uh, this is an indication that things are still bearish and we've still got plenty of momentum to the downside. So don't get too hung up on that stochastic RSI. Uh, we are looking for this confirmed breakdown lower than a 50 EMA. That's going to give me some confidence and the 200 EMA currently sat at 55.28 sorry, 54.89 is going to be our kind of major kind of area for support. Lose that, then we can talk about going to 50 cent. And again, we can short the market here on the daily time frame with a confirmed breakdown lower than 200 EMAs, tight stop loss above there, a target out 1.5 risk reward ratio, which isn't even going to get me anyway close to the target, but it's going to be very, very profitable nonetheless with a little bit of leverage. So for the most part, our daily time frame is one of those. We'll keep a close eye on it. We still are looking for that bullish break to the upside. Momentum on the stochastics looking good, but not so good on the relative strength index um, and we are looking for 75 to 85 cents before breaking down even further question is and it's same as yesterday really are we going to see the uh, federal reserve cut their interest rates before we get to 75 cents or are we going to see uh, 75 cents before they cut that's going to be interesting i think we'll probably see the federal reserve cut their interest rates before we actually get into that and that could be a catalyst for a big sell-off so be very cautious uh, specifically with longs we don't want to go long unless we have a really good strong reason to do so on the daily time frame lots of trading opportunities on the smaller time frame lots of dollar cost averaging opportunities on the smaller time uh, on the larger time frame here, we are, of course, still tracking this idea. Uh, we have the potential to come back down into this lower range between 33.46 and 46.16. Incredibly bearish, and that's where I want to be a little bit cautious. Uh, we want to see the breakout to 75 to 85 cents, but there's a possibility here, unless we can break up higher than 75 cents, that we are still in a bearish pattern. So if the Federal Reserve cut interest rates beforehand, we could see the market spook and come down deeper in price. That's going to be a huge dollar cost averaging opportunity and potentially trading opportunity if you wanted to do so. Uh, so for the most part, yeah, I think XRP is at one of those really interesting spots in time. Uh, lots of opportunities on the smaller timeframes, lots of opportunities on the larger timeframes, um, specifically from that dollar cost averaging and building out those positions, because I think we've got only really a small window left. We've got a few more months, uh, like September, October, to really take advantage of the markets for altcoins, because after that, I'm thinking the market's going to absolutely explode to the upside as we go into 2025, and it's going to be a fantastic fantastic time to be in crypto. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below or join us in our free Discord server. And uh, if you haven't done so already, guys, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new and check out my second channel just here where I go through the Cardano technical analysis every single day.